is the year 2021? Because the last time we made a video about this specific player asking for this type of a move, it was back in October of 2021. Yes, that is right. This is a year and a bit's worth of time in the making because when you head over to the New York Rangers and you go over their entire forward depth chart system right here, there is a name that is sort of a... Uh, how do I say this? He's a talented player but he's not really too high up there on the depth chart. You could debate that he's technically more talented and has a bit more potential than some players who are above him in said depth chart. But the fact of the matter is, the Rangers were just named the best team in the NHL on TSN's power rankings, overtaking the Boston Bruins, and they're there for a reason. The Rangers are looking for blood in this year's Stanley Cup playoffs, and they've been playing so well with a pretty good amount of chemistry throughout all their lines that you really can't go out there and say that at the moment they're doing anything wrong. Which is why, when you see a player like this in Vitaly Kravtsov being put in the position he is in this lineup and asking for a trade because of it, you can't really go out there and blame anybody at this point. Now, Vitaly Kravtsov, as we have talked about in many, many videos over the past few years, has been sort of on the polarizing side of New York Rangers guys. I get it. There are a lot of players in the Rangers development system the past few years, especially in their first round for forwards that have been difficult to follow. You had Leish Anderson, who was taken in the first round of 2017. Vitaly Kravtsov was taken ninth overall in 2018. The year after that, you had Kako. The year after that, Lafreniere. None of these guys have really become, quote-unquote, as good as they were supposed to be. And a lot of that could be chalked up to the Rangers and their development. However, I will go out there and say that at the moment, Capo Caco is on one of those hot streaks that a lot of people go out there and bring up every few weeks when he goes on them, and so I don't really think it's fair to bring up Caco's name in that sort of discourse. And Lafreniere has scored some clutch goals the past little while here, so I think it's fair to give him the pass for now as well. But for Vitaly Kravtsov, this has been the one story that has had a little bit more of a stain than the others. Because ever since getting drafted in 2018, Kravtsov has been an up-and-down winger pretty much all over the map. He stayed in Russia after getting drafted, was pretty okay for Tractor Chelyabinsk, went over to the AHL the next season only to go back to Russia in the KHL and VHL where he wasn't as successful as he had been the prior year. In 2020-2021, he returned to New York. He played there after playing in Tractor Chelyabinsk again in 2021-2022. He was yet again in the KHL, and now this season he's played 28 games, played with the main New York Rangers, and he's garnered six points in the process. Now, if you go over to the Rangers and their lines, you can see that this team is assembled in such a way that a lot of their forward development has been sort of bolstered up the past little while here. You've got Panarin, Trocek, and VC on a line. Kreider, Zabanejad, and Tarasenko on another line. Pretty good. The kid line is there as your third line. And then in the fourth line, you have Goodrow, Lassitian, and Julian Gauthier. You don't even have Vitaly Kravtsov as an available player on this roster right now. And with the in and out sort of status that he has had on this team, where he's just kind of intermittently once in a while popping in there on the fourth line, playing in sort of a grinder-esque type of role, you're really going out there and not capitalizing on the talent profile that Vitaly Kravtsov has. Hey, plain and simple, you have a guy like Jimmy Vesey who is playing in your top six. He is a right winger on that second line with Panarin and Trocek. You could very much debate, is VC a more quote-unquote talented player than Vitaly Kravtsov? I don't know. You could go out there and say that Kravtsov definitely has more to show for at the NHL level, more skills, potentially more sniping ability. But the bottom line is Jimmy VC has just played so well with a lot of these other guys in the top six that taking him out would be sort of a disservice to the players around him. Sure, having Kravtsov playing with some of the top guys might make Kravtsov look good, but do these other players benefit from playing with Vitaly than, let's say, playing with somebody else? You can't really break up a lot of these lines because they've been just gelling so well, and that's ultimately where the conundrum comes out for Vitaly Kravtsov, as we had ourselves an article published by Larry Brooks two days ago, talking about how the Rangers should only grant Kravtsov's trade wishes for a worthy return. 
The Post has confirmed that Vitaly Kravtsov's camp has requested that number 74 be moved ahead of March 3rd's trade deadline if he is not part of the club's immediate plans. Saturday, Scratch and Carolina, after having been reinserted into the line at the previous night against Seattle following four straight in street clothes, indicates that he is not. This is not the time of the season that Stanley Cup contenders focus on development. Instead, these clubs begin to ramp up the pace as the stakes become clearer. There is potentially more physicality and more play in the rink's combat zones. Those who live in the perimeter will be consigned to the periphery. That is the pool in which Kravtsov belongs. The talented and personable Russian plays on the outside. He does not win enough of the 50-50 battles. He does not go to the net. His 200-foot game, both with and without the puck, remains suspect. He has not been able to carve out a role as a difference maker even for a night or two. His contributions diminish through a run of 17 straight games that ended last month. Kravtsov may become a chip that Chris Drury will play, but the GM has no obligation to accede to the winger's wishes if the proposed return is deemed unsatisfactory. I would submit that dealing the 23-year-old ninth overall pick back in 2018 in exchange for a fourth-line rental would represent very poor asset management. Then there are some potential trade ideas tossed around in there, yada yada yada, but ultimately this is the point that I think is sort of being made here that Vitaly Kravtsov is a player who still needs more development. If you want this guy to become the best version of himself, you have an opportunity to do that. He's only 23 years old. He has the potential to maybe get that 50-point marker that some people were expecting him to be able to achieve when he was drafted. 50 points in a prime year as a middle six scoring forward, maybe a power play second line type of guy. But the point is, the Rangers at this point in the season and this point in their timeline, they can't afford to focus on developing Kravtsov. They've got to focus on making the playoffs and making a roster that can gel well enough to succeed in the playoffs. They just traded for Vladimir Tarasenko, another right winger that is going to dethrone Kravtsov even further down that death chart. You already talked about Capocacco, you talked about Jimmy VC. now there's Tarasenko in the mix too, and that guy's got himself a really good chance at being the piece they needed to put themselves over the edge. Vitaly Kravtsov unfortunately has not stepped up in that sort of way and as a result you have a de facto situation where he is now just the odd man out and so just seeing the trade pop up saying that he wants out once again after wanting out two years ago because his development was handled so weirdly under the rangers organization we made a video about that by the way you can check that out it was from a few years ago where kravtsov himself spoke to the russian media and said that the way he was being developed in new york was very weird in terms of his up and down and the lack of communication and the lack of follow-up on the communication that he received it was so weird but at the end of the day, I mean, it's not really like Kravtsov himself was pulling his own weight in these developmental conversations and processes, so I don't know. Is it fair to say that the Rangers might have mistreated Kravtsov over the years? I think that's more than fair. Is it fair to say that Kravtsov himself hadn't really upheld his own part of the bargain? I think that's also fair as well. I don't think this is really a black and white, okay, it's his fault, it's their fault situation, and it's done. I think there are elements to this that really just kind of fault both sides. And right now, in 2023, with the Rangers being as good as they are, being as competent and as streaky as they've been the past little while, this is not the time to debate who's right or wrong. This is the time to get Kravtsov off the team if he wants out and get something else that could really help them out to solidify this year's playoff push. We'll end this video off by talking about the comments made by Gerard Gallant on the trade request. It's not easy. Kravtsov is a top nine player, and right now he is not in our top nine. He is not going to be a fourth line player. He doesn't play in that role for our team. We like him. I like him. He's a good kid. He's got to continue to work hard when the chance is available. Take advantage of it. You don't give anything to anybody. You gotta make them earn it. And for Kravtsov, unfortunately for him, even if you put him with Trocek and you put him with Panarin, he would have been good. He definitely would have been more than okay. It's just a guy like Jimmy Vc brings more to the table out of the guys that he's playing with than Kravtsov does individually. So you can't really go out there and just insert him into the lineup for the purpose of development because it kind of shakes up the chemistry of the whole team. So at the end of the day, even though this is a talented player, the Rangers may have to say goodbye because he's just not really fitting in with their plan right now. So you can leave in your thoughts in the comment section below if you're a Rangers fan. What are your thoughts on Vitaly Kravtsov requesting a trade for the second time pretty much and for the Rangers and their entire trade debacle with him at the forefront? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. I hope you enjoyed this Vrishraj Shrolsa 99.
and bye.